master planning doesn't always mean top-down. Let's take a look at the East London village of Raynham, where a decade of small architectural interventions have bit by bit been reconnecting the village with the River Thames and helping regenerate the area. Here we are in Raynham, and this is right on the eastern edge of London. One of a, a series of settlements set back from uh, the Thames. Where the green belt starts and then turns into Essex. And um, yeah, you really have moments when you feel that it's on this boundary, which makes it quite special. Despite being in the countryside, it did used to be this kind of hive of activity and industry. It still retains that village identity, whereas I think a lot of the other places around here have been subsumed into that industrial hinterland. It's in some ways a village, it's um, in some ways remote from London, but actually it's close to the marshes, the river. It's an amazing mix of pieces and in recent years there's been an effort to celebrate the nature of the place, make it more visitable, improve the industry so it can thrive. The, uh, the GLA, effectively the Mayor's Office, have been interested in Raynham for well over 10 years. It's been a place that they have patronised with packages of funding to make many different projects over probably a 10 or 15 year period, um, all of which are connected uh, spatially. So individual buildings within the village core have been connected and made sense of through a series of public realm projects that permeate both the existing fabric and link in these new buildings. For example, of the new library here. The Royals Youth Centre. Landrum's walking bridge. A new space in front of the station. The refurbishment of several shop fronts. Raynham Hall. Railing Hall. All the street furniture. Murals. A couple of large uh, boardwalk structures. Alison Brooks. Uh, reclad of an existing warehouse. Lots of little bridges. So it's like a mosaic of adjustments that have been happening over time, not just us involved, that um, keeps hold of the place, but actually makes it more amazing. So starting with the work by Civic at the Royals Youth Centre with the creation of these two new rooms, really that have a, a vantage point over the north side of the village. The building itself holds itself out into that space, cantilevering out in a gestural way. It creates a glassy corner where children and young people using this space can be seen. It's about making connections, perhaps connections or routes. For example, the thoroughfare which goes along uh, the side of this building here has been remade by East with mud-coloured clay pavers and uh, engineering brick walls and uh, crisp white Toblerone-shaped copings, which now reinforce the importance of this um, thoroughfare as a route from the high street in Raynham to the edge of the village. Close by Railing Hall, a public space project by East. Made out of railings with finials on top, uh, the like of which you might see in a more domestic context elsewhere in Essex. It's a kind of unfinished space. It's a holding space for something that could happen and is not completely programmed. It's not expecting you to do something in the space. It's just providing you with a backdrop, a sort of unfinished feel. We were trying to reveal, celebrate, um, in, in a slightly episodic series of adjustments within a broader strategy, which was about saying the place is already amazing. That's the starting point. So let's work into that. Raynham Hall, really the National Trust are investing in it in a way that makes it something different than it, it has been up till now. We're opening it up to the public for the first time. It's not going to be a typical National Trust property. It's not going to be about one person. It's going to be about all the different people who live there. So what we'd like to see in the hall is people making it their own and having an ownership over it and feeling like they can inhabit the space. Then moving south through the village, one comes down to the new civic building of Raynham Library by Macrina Lavington. Combined with a new public space and um, a bus to rail interchange, 
and some housing, a cafe and a shop to go with it. The building is arranged so that the low part faces the medieval village and the taller part faces the south and basically towards the marshes and um, the big industrial estate. From the library one can move up and over the railway lines down the trackway uh, linking into a series of uh, public space projects which my own practice Landroom have worked on over uh, the last few years. Peter Beard uh, made routes and paths and lots of little bridges taking you over bits of water. He's reduced the travel distance by a kilometre to get from Raynham to the river. The work within the village core is about quite sensitive recognition and adjustments to a series of pre-existing spaces. Then as one moves down towards the river the scale of spaces is dramatically different. You're dealing with large open landscapes. The marshes itself is 600 hectares in size. A very striking thing about architecture in a place like this is that you've got the intimate scale for example of the new library here, normal things like where you go in, how it meets the bus station and the village and those kind of things, but you've also got this very big scale, big new industrial buildings. What should they be like in relation to a marsh space, a visited space, something that's huge and feels tough, but in a way is quite fragile, the experienced sense of it. Projects which are driven partly by public access and partly by a sensitivity about how that links in both to the village and to uh, the spaces of the river. The Channel Tunnel rail link had completely cut off the village from the marshes. A whole series of infrastructure corridors, railway lines, gas lines, electricity pylons. It would have been great if that hadn't increased the barrier between Raynham Village and the marshes, but it did. And um, it then becomes something which has to be accommodated and worked with. And you know, hence this gives rise to uh, Landrum's uh, walking bridge. This long bridge which takes you straight in I guess along your desire line of getting south and towards the uh, river. It makes a connection for local people to begin to enjoy that landscape. I mean, people go to Raynham for a weekend. They go to visit, they go to see the birds, they go to walk around, but they can't do it so easily without these infrastructural connections. So we were really interested in designing quite surgical splint-like adjustments that helped you get down to the river but didn't dominate the amazing qualities of the place. I consider all these design projects and the ambition that they have really to have civic ambition. Civic is a, is a very interesting phrase and I think architects a lot of the time use it to mean something, mean a type of space that dictates how you should behave. I mean using words such as civic is in some ways a, a little bit problematic and it refers to you know Greek roots and it seems to have embedded in it a kind of historic understanding of, of public space. Mm. One needs to understand a broader sense of what uh, what the public realm is and that it would incorporate spaces such as the supermarket car park. People aren't building Trafalgar Square anymore. Really I think civic architecture and the idea of the concept of civic or being civic or being a citizen is something which has always been very strongly linked to the idea of what is a community. And so I think civic architecture now really is a community architecture or public architecture, the design of public spaces. We need to pick out these very few places that are there that might help people to identify with the place and it not just becoming one big blanket of new stuff where people come from all sorts of places and doesn't feel like home. What tends to happen is that you have a bit of public realm that goes like a little skirt around the bottom of the building. Uh, that doesn't make a public realm. Uh, what does make a public realm is a more surgical, more place-specific way of engaging with infrastructure, existing spaces. We relate to certain things in our identity and I don't know, Raynham Village is very, very, very small, but I think it is, um, there's moments of something quite special um, which will help people to, to have that as their destination and feel like that's where they belong to.